child is this? What child is this? <laughs> With me. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ. The King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh. Come, King and peasant, to own him. The King of kings salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and aim. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Thank you very much. Would you like to share some thought? Or... That's okay. All right. Um, let's see. Narasakai Pasqua. <laughs> you didn't expect me to say that, did you? <laughs> well, I have many friends from Benguet by now, and through Messenger or Facebook, it's easy to ask them uh, the words that I'm seeking in Kankanai. They'll teach me. <laughs> I have Igorot preacher friends. Uh, he calls himself uh, FBI. <laughs> Full blooded Igorot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to uh, share tonight. Uh, some thought about Christmas and the meaning of Christmas and uh, it is very meaningful to read a passage from Luke book of Luke second chapter uh, verses 1 through 20 that talks about the birth of Jesus Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. Please. 
so called went to be re registered everyone to his own city. Verse 4. Joseph also went out from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Verse 5. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Verse 6. While they were there, the days came to the full for her to be birth. Verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Verse 9. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Verse 10. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Verse 11. Today is the time of David's Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God in sea. Verse 14. Glory to God in the eyes, and the earth is glory in the Lord's Verse 15. It was when the angels had gone away from them in heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see these things that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Verse 16. And they come with his and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger. Verse 17. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all that heard marveled over the things told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Waiting, then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told. Very good. And one more passage, short passage, I would like you to open to the book of Acts, Acts uh, chapter 20, book of Acts chapter 20, verses starting with uh, 32, 32nd verse up to 38, verses 32 to 38, Acts 20, chapter 20 of the book of Acts, verse 32 to 38. Everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Verse 36, and when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Verse 37, when they all prayed. And came unto us, and came to Verse 38. 
sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more. And they accompanied him to the ship. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to focus particularly on verse 35 toward the end of that verse. It is more blessed to give than to receive, as the Lord Jesus said. Um, <clears throat> um, when I was a um, very beautiful and handsome boy, <laughs> maybe around eight or seven, seven or eight years old, maybe younger, I was told uh, that Santa Claus will come to our house through a through a chimney um, and then if you put out a socks near your bed he will give you some presents and I wondered I was living in Kagawa Prefecture, uh, of course there was, there was no fireplace in our house, old Japanese style house. Uh, there was a, do you call this chimney? What do you call it? Yeah, no, yeah. Um, our cooking place, kitchen, was on the dirt floor. With, uh, we put, we use wood, make fire, and then uh, cook rice or whatever. And then the smoke goes through this um, pipe, through the roof, into the sky. Okay. But this, that's about this big. And I wondered, looking at that, you know, how can Santa Claus come in through that? I couldn't figure out, and then, but my brother and I put out our socks over our head, still wondering how how can Santa Claus come, come in, where, which route does he take, you know? But I fell asleep. Next morning, our socks were full of stuff, candies, oranges, things like that, you know. And I was thrilled, really happy. Wow, in socks. How did he think to use a socks to put his presents in? And as I was um, uh, walking in front of our house, there was a what you, would, what you would call a sari sari store. Uh, there was a small store. And when I looked in there, I saw same kind of orange, same kind of candies, <laughs> right in front of our house. But there was no connection there. But I was happy. And uh, only one time, my, uh, I think it was my father, gave me and my brother a piece of cake, about this cake, Christmas cake, white frosted um, creamy cake with sponge cake inside, with a little nice house on top, with uh, snow and then trees. You see the, those uh, Christmas trees in Japan? In Marunaka, maybe. You see that? <laughs> it was about this size. And it was so thrilling to see that uh, beautiful cake for me. I didn't want to eat it. It was too precious to eat. So I just look and look and look. And maybe just taste uh, just a little bit, taste, you know. But I thought maybe I would hide it somewhere that nobody can touch it. So I 
hope that it would last for a long time. So I thought of where to hide it. Found that maybe a closet would be a good place to hide my cake with a top lid. Put it there, clothes hanging underneath, very far, nobody can touch it. Hit it there. And then every time I come back from school, I reach for it, open it, and look, and look, and so enjoy. It's like a dream world. Wonderful. Oh. Then I eat just a little bit. <laughs> but then put the lid on and, and then put it way back there so nobody can bother with it. So I was really excited to come back from school every day to rush to that cake and see it, enjoy it. Maybe for uh, five or six days I always, you know, went to the cake. It was slowly, slowly. I, I ate a little bit at a time, slowly getting smaller, but still good shape. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> let, me, let me, excuse me. Let me. <laughs> All right. I hope this will. Okay. And then, one day, when I uh, came home, um, my cape was gone. And uh, mouse ate it. Mouse ate the whole thing. It was all scattered. Terrible, terrible scene to see it. Oh no, I should have eaten it much earlier. <laughs> but that mouse had a meal of his lifetime, I think. He can never forget that gorgeous food. Um, I um, grew up and then uh, when I was uh, in high school, I always wanted to study in the United States. So I studied English at school. And uh, then in my, when I was 20 years old, I finally went to the United States, to the uh, state of Idaho, uh, to a small Christian college. It's called Northwest Nazarene College. It's now a university. Wonderful people there, and they were all Christians. And I was never in such environment in my life. It was the first time for me to be among Christians in the dorm, at school, classroom, teachers, students, staff in the stores. They were all Christians. And they would go to church every Wednesday and Sundays. And the dorm on Sunday, nobody's there in, in the dorm. So I began going to church with them for the first time in my life. Wonderful people. They are so kind. And uh, they cared for me. I felt it. They cared. And after a couple months later, I had a conversion of my life. I was totally converted to Christian faith. And uh, from then on, my life took a completely new course. I knew that Christ saved my heart. He showed me my sin. I was, I didn't know how terrible I was until he showed me who I am. And 
I just cried and cried, and then God showed me His love, amazing love of forgiveness and accepting me and surrounding me with with such a tremendous warmth. And so my heart was completely changed, and I experienced salvation. I began to sing, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the, uh, thy salvation, so rich and so free. I would just sing that song every morning going to class. Sing that song to a tree. Sing that song to a bird. I just sang. My joy welled up from my heart because of finding Jesus Christ. Just as we sang in the Christmas carol, He was born to give us the second birth. I experienced my second birth. I was born again and began to read the Bible. I didn't know what the Bible was written about. Wonderful stories, unbelievable stories in, in this Bible. And it just touched my heart, touched my soul, and I read it every day, and tears came out of my eyes as I read the Bible. I didn't know God, but Christ showed God to me. And then, after a couple months, my first Christmas came after my conversion. Um, during the Christmas break, I didn't know what to do. Being alone in a dormitory is not a very good idea. Uh, being a foreign student, uh, no family around. One day I was uh, studying in the library. A student came up to me and said, would you like to go to um, uh, volunteer work uh, down to Arizona uh, in a town called Douglas. It's primarily a Mexican uh, American town and they were going to renovate an old, old church. Uh, it has been abandoned and uh, he wanted me to ask me if I wanted to join the group to renovate this abandoned church. Not knowing what it is and not having any place to go during winter break, I said, sure, I'd like to go with you. And so I joined the group, about 25 people, and we got on in a different car, car, several cars, and they brought lots of uh, materials to renovate the church, carpet and other uh, woods and lots of things. And then it took three days from Idaho to Arizona by car. We stayed two nights at a uh, church, one church in Las Vegas. We stayed in sort of like a gymnasium, in a sleeping bag. And, uh, and then, after three days, got to Douglas, Arizona. And then, there was this abandoned church with a Mexican pastor and an American uh, wife, two little children, girls. And then we started renovating this. I didn't know how, but they showed me how to do it. Just scrape the outside, all the dust and the dirt. and The entire church 
scrape it completely and then paint it with a new paint. It's a lot of paint to do the whole entire building. And then put a new panel inside the walls uh, and, and then the insulation inside and panels and and did the window works and and uh, ceiling also we put the ceiling and then uh, flooring put new red carpet beautiful carpet and after one week that abandoned very worn out very very old church became a brand new church with 25 students with one week church was completely changed and at the end of that week we dedicated this new building to God and had a, had a meeting dedication meeting that was the last night evening and I was preparing the chairs for people to sit inside the sanctuary and then many Mexican neighborhood children came inside the sanctuary looking around with a beautiful new walls and windows and new paintings everywhere with their joys that I could see their, their eyes were um, full of joy and curiosity and as I looked at those children somehow my heart was filled with a joy a kind of joy that I had never experienced before where does joy like this come from? I worked at different jobs before and I got paid but there was no joy like that. I was so overwhelmed with the joy of giving my just one week and labor but when I see children so happy that brought me incredible joy and that night during the dedication service I gave my heart to God and prayed Lord if you will give me a vocation a job for my life which has this kind of joy not just a job but a work that brings such joy this is the kind of life that I have been looking for I don't know what it is but God lead me my life so that I will lead a life with this kind of joy that seeing people are happy. After we praying that prayer, we came back to Idaho by way of California, a long, long drive, and inside the car, I was always thinking, what would my future be like? What kind of job should I take? What kind of course of life I was just wondering and wondering and then an idea came that I should change my major my major original major was literature I changed my major to religion and I wanted to study the Bible and concentrate and then study to be a preacher and a pastor. So I changed my major at the age of 20. Just a few months ago, I 
didn't know anything about the Bible, but my major was religion. And all the other students have been in church since their birth, and they know the Bible from front to back, but I didn't know much about the Bible. But I studied it, I enjoyed it, and then um, went to seminary after that, studied further. But the Lord gave me this uh, new calling, calling to be a preacher, to be a pastor. I was 20 years old, and then almost half a century have passed since then. So now you can figure out how old I am. <laughs> little, little over that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was my first Christmas after my conversion the Lord answered my prayer and gave me a life that brings a joy that I never expected and I learned that living a life as Jesus said as a servant to serve other people it is more blessed to give than to receive. Normally, in our common sense thinking, it is more blessed to receive than to give, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, more blessing to receive. Wow, wonderful. But Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And I found that truth be true in my life. If you are willing to give your life to God for people, then God gives a kind of joy that nothing else can give you. Nothing else. Not even a very good movie. Not even the best of cars in the world. The joy of God cannot be compared with nothing at all. And I found that true in my life. I'd like to share just one more story. Um, when my wife and I, we got married in Idaho and then went to Kansas City to study in the seminary. And one day we met a Japanese businessman. He was traveling in the United States selling Japanese tractors to different companies. He had his tractors in a big truck and he was driving this truck all around the states to sell Japanese tractors. I don't know how successful he was. I'm not sure. Way back then. But uh, my wife happened to help him with translation, uh, interpretation at one company. That, that way we got to know him and invited him over to our apartment. And he shared a story with us. He said one winter, he was there for a long time, one winter he was traveling, with, driving his truck in the state of Minnesota. And in wintertime, Minnesota gets very cold, right? Below zero, freezing cold. He was driving and then going to a, a kind of a hills, hillside, and then going to a, over, going to a pass, kind of steep, driving this in the blizzard snow, storm, very cold. But he wanted to go to the next town quickly. So he was hurrying, but then it was too much for the truck. And then just at the pass, top of the pass, his truck broke down. 
and he couldn't restart the engine. He tried, he didn't start. So, he's a mechanic, he knows tractors, he knows all the machines, so he got out, started to repair his truck engine outside. But it's so cold. If you are in the freezing cold place for a, for some time, you feel like oh, your life is in danger because your hands start to, after a while, get very stiff and you cannot really move your hands, you know. But he had to fix his truck in order to, to save himself, go to the next town and get inside a warm place. So he was really trying his hard best to fix his truck. So cold. And there were some cars passing by, but no one stopped to help him. He was feeling desperate and hoping that somebody would stop and help me. But he, no one was helping. So, but he had to try so hard. And after a few hours outside, he was almost hopeless. But then one car passed by, and this car made a stop a little distance from the truck. And then out of that car came an old man, elderly per gentleman, came outside and came to him and he said, Well, sir, I don't know anything about mechanical things, about engines. You know well, how to do it. I'm sorry, I cannot help you with fixing your truck. But my wife and I are in that car, little car, and inside the car is warm. And we have some coffee, hot coffee, and donuts. So whenever you feel like it, you can come into a car anytime you want to. We are open. Okay? You have my, our invitation. So he went back to his car. And after hearing that, oh, he said, this uh, elderly gentleman also said, we will be here until you fix your truck, we will never leave you alone. We will be here. And went back to his car. So after hearing that, this Japanese businessman felt so relieved. And he gained new power to start fixing his car truck again. And he, he did. And then, uh, during that course of time, he went to the car and warmed himself up, had a nice coffee and donut, gained new power, and came back to the truck, fixed it several times, back and forth. And finally, before the sun set down, he fixed his truck and restarted his engine and he said he could save his life and he was sharing this story with us and when he shared I saw tears in his eyes because of that elderly couple just sitting there actually doing nothing but and they don't know anything about trucks how to fix engines. But just being there gave him such a tremendous encouragement and strength. And he was so moved by this elderly couple. And we can, even though we, even if we don't have a professional knowledge about engines or professional knowledge about medical things or whatever it may be. 
our, if our heart is reaching out to someone who is in need, that gives someone tremendous power and strength and will to move on. So, just like Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It gives you a joy which is incredible joy. You cannot compare with anything else in this world. The joy of the Lord, joy from God. If we give our life to God and ask God to use us, to help us to reach out to someone in need. It may be someone close by. It may be your own family. You may be feeling lonely. I know you're far away from home. Especially Christmas time. You want to be with your family. But your family also are very lonely without you. And so, let us focus on Christ Jesus and thank Him how much your family mean to you, how much friends mean to you. Thank God that God has provided family members for you and gave you wonderful time in your past. Up to now, they give you wonderful, wonderful fellowship with you. Thank God about that. And ask God to help us to reach someone who is feeling lonely, someone who is in need, someone who we need to be cared. And if we do, God will bless us with His joy that nothing can compare. And we can overcome our own loneliness our own dissatisfaction God will give us the joy so let's just keep this short passage in mind this Christmas the Lord Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive okay let us pray dear Lord thank you for this year's Christmas gathering here in Noichi with these Filipino brothers and sisters with Stephanie and Yuki I know how pleased you are knowing that there is this little gathering here in this part of Kochi that who is praying and singing praises to you over the birth of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, and being close to you and hoping that we live in the footsteps of Christ. I know and believe that you bless each one and help each one not to concentrate on our own difficulties or miseries or loneliness, but rather focus on your love and grace and your provision, your faithfulness, your love. Help us, O oh Lord, to focus on the birth of Christ, the Savior, who fills us by the Holy Spirit and be with us always. And He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So, dear Lord, help us to remember your word. It is more blessed to give than to receive. 
in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen
uh, only to enjoy this uh, the worldly life, but uh, uh, a holy life. Yes, Lord. Yes. And uh, we use uh, we we uh, pray all this in uh, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.